Hello everyone, this is Bond Extreme here, and welcome to the XGP cast. Uh, it's been a very long time since I've actually uh, done one of these episodes. <laughs> I can't even remember, it's probably like 2012 or something along those lines. I barely even did this show anyway, back then when I thought of it, and just tried to get everything together, but it's just... I, for some reason, never panned out with it and worked through it, but now I'm gonna try to do it. Um, primarily because um, I love this Star Citizen game so much, um, that's probably what I am going to mainly have all these new cast videos for now. Um, but uh, basically I would like to um, start going over this uh, Mondays, uh, March 17th, uh, 10 for the Chairman uh, episode. Um, so basically I picked out a majority of the questions to go over on there really quick. Um, just a quick overview so we won't have to, um, you know, twiddle our thumbs and just talk about, you know, one thing for five minutes. Um, like a lot of these YouTubers do on some of these Star Citizen videos. I'm not going to name anyone, but there are people, you know, like for example, you do, they do their ship tour and their hangar module and they literally stare in a corner for freaking five minutes. I'm not kidding you. There are people like this out there. What is wrong with them? Something's wrong up there. I, I, I don't... Anyway. <laughs> um, and I promise I will upgrade my webcam soon. I promise. Um, I'm not going to make this um, video too big in my... Um, when I edit the video, I'm not gonna make it too big in the program because I have this huge mobile here, here on the side. <laughs> Sorry, the screen is like messing me up, and I'm touching it. Ew, gross. Uh, it's huge, so I don't need to be looking at that. Even though my face with this lighting, it's like wider than sour cream, which is what I am. Anyway, <laughs> um, so uh, let me start here with uh, renting ships. I thought. Okay, before I get into anything, I thought this was a great episode. Um, there's, I mean, I've probably watched about 20 or so, 10 for the Chamans, and, um, no, maybe like 15 so far, and this is probably one of the best. I mean, at least to me, it's very interesting, intriguing, just crap, like awesome crap about the game that just, it, it's something people want to know. Um, and, you know, just uh, as I was saying in my last video two days ago, um, I recently became a backer. Very happy about that. Um, I bought a freelancer. So um, I'm like, you know what, let me just get started into this whole, you know, Star Citizen community. So, uh, renting ships. Uh, I thought this was an interesting question. I never thought about this myself in the game, but apparently someone asked, um, one of the backers asked if, um, you know, you can rent ships from people, and apparently you can, um, but Chris Roberts said probably, <laughs> so, um, basically you can work for hire, other people can work for you, and you can rent your ship, or other people can rent their ship to you, and do work or business with whoever. Which I thought was pretty cool. Uh, okay, so next question is uh, NPC hiring. Um, I thought this was an uh, interesting question. All these really are, so I'll probably stop saying, uh, saying interesting. <laughs> um, so basically, um, Chris Roberts was just explaining how you'll be able to uh, hire NPCs with different specialties. Uh, to man your ship and you know different aspects such as um, you know like a gunner or a pilot um, and at the same time there will be progression for them as well so basically if they win a whole lot of battles you know they'll get better over time with whatever uh, you know role they're playing in your ship so I thought that was interesting oh my god I said it again wow I'm sorry <laughs> I'm never gonna get past that 
Uh, anyway, uh, it's right there, the pimple. Don't look at it, please. Oh, it's terrible. Disgusting. Um, <laughs> next question is, uh, will there be benefits for uh, ejecting out of your ship before it explodes or disintegrates or however you want to, what, whatever adjective you want to put in there. So, um, he says, um, obviously, um, not all ships will have the ejecting uh, capability. Uh, some will, um, you know, like some of the bigger ship ships will have escape pods. Um, like my ship, uh, most likely the Freelancer or the Constellation, I believe, is the other big ship currently on the market to buy. Um, and he says, um, again, you know, there will be a benefit for ejecting slash escaping into your escape pod instead of dying. Um, basically, each time after you die, you will uh, wake up in uh, med bay, um, kind of like in the Old Republic. I think it was you like woke up in some kind of a hospital or medical facility, sort of, or a tent, <laughs> um, which is questionable. It's like, what am I waking up in, in a tent after a, a pod racing crash? <laughs> anyway, um, I guess what's going to happen is after so many times, your character, your character wow, will eventually completely pass away after so many deaths, and um, after that happens, their possessions or traits... Uh, per se, will pass on to your character's successor. Um, so I think that's pretty neat. Um, but, I mean, don't do that, because dying is bad. And um, eventually, um, I guess over time, if you die a lot, um, Chris Roberts went on to say how, you know, it could potentially uh, increase your bills. Whatever that means. Um, I mean, most likely it's going to increase your um, insurance on your ship, because I believe they went over that in a different episode in 10 for the Chairman. So, I mean, it's obvious, but I don't know if there's other bills, um, you know, in the game that's going to increase over time if you have, like, medical bills or not. Um, here's a quick one I, I decided to put in here. Uh, design your own costumes. Uh, uh, Chris Roberts went on to say how the, this is mainly going to be um, you know, something for the modding community if uh, y you, know, you want to create your own uh, design, costume design for your character in the game. Um, but, I mean, he mainly pointed out again the whole modding support for the game, how you'd be able to do that, but um, he went out to say how there's you know, already a whole lot of customization in the game for your character. Um, you know, that's already there um, in game. So, yeah, next question. Um, oh, I thought this was good. Uh, someone did ask about alpha testing, not just regular beta testing, alpha. Um, so, basically, this uh, I'm not going to name these um, backers, I mean, maybe eventually, but they asked us, does Cloud Imperium games see us primarily stress testers of only finished assets, or are we going to be testing the unfinished versions of the game and putting bug reports out and stuff like that? Basically like a WoW beta test, or really any beta test around that, just like an average beta test, whatever. I'm not going to explain it. You get what I'm talking about. So uh, he said yes, um, obviously. Um, Basically, uh, what's going on is, um, you know, they're releasing the game in different modules. Um, you know, like right now we have the hangar module, and then um, I think he went on to say there's going to be, um, what is it, like a shooter? No, a first-person combat module that they're going to be releasing. And then um, planet side module, um, and there's, they're going to come out in different chunks, I guess. And eventually, you know, they'll get to the beta after the alpha, whenever that's going to be. Um, and I thought it was cool how he went on to compare their dedicated stress testers, you know, at the company versus their stress testing department of 200,000 people, which is AKA us, or Beckers, woohoo, that spent an uh, ungodly amount of money on a video game already. Most likely a year, year and a half before it comes out. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, next question is, while piloting our ships, and, 
in a fight, for example, will the wreckage from others be a hazard? I thought this was cool. Um, he went on to say yes. Um, it's uh, not like the ships blow up in a fireball and disappear. I thought that was a cool analogy because most video games, if you kill someone, they just vanish. Like, what? where'd they go? What? What is this? This is not real life. <laughs> um, he just went on to say, you know, you're going to have to avoid and watch out for wrecks. So, I mean, I don't know if that's going to come up on your radar, most likely, but because, um, you know, it's like you're just flying a freaking spaceship out in the darkness. Like, like, oh, it's look at that sun coming up. Isn't that pretty? Bam. You die. That won't be fun. Anyway, it just became very awkward, so let me <laughs> continue. Uh, now, while piloting our ships, um, wow, I am going crazy right now. That's the same question. Sorry, I have like a little notepad open up just for little pointers. Um, actually, this is my favorite question of the week. Um, and actually, this is probably one of my most questioned questions of this game. Because uh, I'm about to do a new computer build within the next probably seven or eight months or so. So, uh, will Star Citizen take full advantage of 6 and 8 core CPUs? And also, how about the RAM? Can they handle between, or um, can they actually, can the game itself actually use uh, 16 to 32 gigabytes of RAM? Uh, he actually said, yeah, which was a big shocker to me. I mean, I know that they're going on to make this incredible game, but my god, I didn't know that they were going to make it um, you know, be able to handle like an, like an actual six or eight core processor. I mean, is there any game out now that can do that? I don't know. If there is, you guys need to leave some comments and let me know what games because that's interesting. Anyway, um, so yeah, I mean, Chris Roberts, he said yes. Uh, you know, CryEngine already has um, multi-threading. You know, for the CPU end of things and. Um, even the RAM he said, yeah, there's a whole bunch of uh, systems they actually is at the office um, that are six to eight core systems. Um, so yeah, I, th I think I might upgrade to 32 gigabytes of RAM in the meantime. Um, that's so crazy, though. It's just a game to be that efficient. Um, so let me go on to the last two questions. Um, I didn't really ever think of this question um, using inertia. Uh, can we use inertia in order to avoid using our fuel? Um, I'm not going to go too into this. Go in. Wow, this microphone is like messing with my hearing or something. <laughs> he basically went on to say, uh, yes, you can. Uh, apparently, there's different flight modes you can set on your ship um, that can make you change flight patterns and velocity types and engine whatever velocity I don't something crazy like that I have no idea this is rocket science <laughs> apparently so uh, anyway next question um, I guess I hope he goes more into that in the future because it does sound cool but I don't know so uh, I guess it's going to be using the dog fighting a lot. He's like, oh, I'm interested to see what it looks like in there. So we'll see. Uh, last question of the podcast is, uh, will jump points be near the edge of solar systems? And will there be dangerous jump points to get there, such as um, near suns or in an asteroid belt? Um, I did like that question a lot. Uh, so for jump points, uh, he said uh, yes. Uh, there will be different kind of jump points and dangerous jump points and all sorts of jump points and there will be uh, jump points all around the universe and every shape, form, size, whatever. Um, I thought this was interesting. Wow, there I go again. How many times have I said that and I not noticed? Uh, he said they will be created uh, by different space anomalies or just whatever, civilization, alien life, whatever. Um, 
and there will be different types of jump points uh, that, for instance, can only take bigger ships or smaller ships or whatever. Um, and uh, some are easier to get to and some are more dangerous to get to uh, than others. So um, I, I could have sworn I talked about that before as far as like some jump points being bigger or taking bigger ships or smaller ships over others. Um, I can't think of why they would need different jump points for bigger or smaller ships or that can only take bigger ships. I mean, because for example, so again, my my thing with it is if you're just flying a very, very, very small ship up to one of these like freaking huge warps, uh, warp points that can only, um, well, you know, like if you fly up to a warp point that uh, that can only take larger ships, it's uh, it's like wh why can't I go in here? It's it just doesn't make sense to me. I don't like why can't you fly a smaller ship into a warp point that can fit? Or that only fits bigger ships. I, I don't know, there's probably some like scientific crap behind it. I, whatever. Anyway, <laughs> um, I think that's it for today, guys. Um, again, my name's Peter Bread, not Bond Extreme. Um, uh, I'll probably be doing these a lot more. Uh, again, I need people like to actually help me with these podcasts and get this podcast going, the XGP Cast. And um, I really want to start getting this channel back up and running, like, for good. I, I I did this one Minecraft series back then in the day, and that's the only reason why I have, like, 80 or 90-something subscribers. Um, I mean, again, it's not really about the subscriber count. I just really want to start actually making videos for, um, you know, my subscribers and myself, you know, just because it entertains us all. And I'm all for the entertainment. So, um, again, uh, please give me, like, an email, comment in the section below, uh, you know, if you want to help out and, and just get started and well, whatever, get started, get, <laughs> start making videos with me. <laughs> Because right now it's just it's really only me. I mean, before I I had someone or um, now it's well with the Minecraft thing it was like a few of us, but you know that kind of dwindled off because we were like more kids back then. Uh, anyway, if you if you want to get um, in touch with me, that'd be awesome. But um, gotta end the video, guys. Uh, I will see you later.